When we first came up with the idea for Vagina Dispatches, we told my immediate boss, um, and she loved it right away. I think it helps that there are a lot of women who work at The Guardian because it was easier for them to understand the importance of the subject. And it took us quite a long time to make. Uh, by the time the first episode came out perfectly, we'd been working on it for about nine months. Um, and I think the entire series took about a year altogether, probably. Yeah. I think the thing that most surprised me was just the lack of knowledge um, that I had and that other females had about their own bodies. You know which part this is? That's the part, like, at the tip. The clitoris? Yeah. Uh, what about this? Vulva. I'm stumped on that right there. You don't know what's between your womb and the world. The vagina! Yeah. I learned so much, really, really, from everything that was really, really basic, to, like the just physical physicality of my anatomy, to understanding how my contraceptive device worked. I just had no idea. I just had it put in and was like, it's fine, I won't get pregnant now. But it's really important to understand how it works and what the possible side effects are. I learned a lot as well while making vagina dispatches and I had no idea that there was a whole internal structure for the clitoris, for example. Um, I knew how bad sex ed in America was, but I didn't realize just how bad it was until we talked to some young people who had to go through it. But in this particular example, it was like we were learning along with our audience and we wanted to be honest that we were kind of similar in that regard on the same level, yeah. Obviously this isn't a complete education. But we wanted to talk about some of the stuff that isn't about sex because there's so much more to our vaginas than just that. Figuring this stuff has been kind of uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. But I think it was worth it. We needed to share those personal experiences to figure out what we didn't know. And that's why we made the series because so many of us are still in the dark about our own bodies. We had so many conversations amongst between ourselves while we were making and thinking about the series and it felt like we wanted to replicate a lot of those conversations for the viewers because that felt like how we would naturally talk about some of these things and for us to take more of an academic stance and be a little bit more reserved maybe people wouldn't connect as much with that and we wanted people to feel like they knew us in some way um, as opposed to just straight telling the facts. Like I hadn't come before last year. That's kind of late. Yeah. That wasn't meant to be judgmental, but yeah. like I can't imagine if a man hadn't come oh by the God. time that yeah. he was like 28, like he would think there was something seriously wrong. And so with the medical profession, studies would be written about this man that didn't come until he was 28. But for some reason for women, it's acceptable that we've been having sex for however long and you just might not orgasm. I think there are, there are still beliefs that are relatively prevalent in society that men are, are very sexual beings and women are, are not as much. Um, and I think that can be a really, really damaging stigma in all kinds of different ways. Um, I also think that related to that is a belief that women's bodies are intended for reproduction and if they haven't produced the child, somehow they have failed in one of their responsibilities. And I think part of the series is that women's bodies aren't just for sex, they're not just for making babies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If we're talking about the possibility of orgasming with a partner, but it's really hard to communicate what you enjoy if you don't know what you enjoy, right? I have felt that I don't have the patience for myself to figure out what works for me sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's not as straightforward as I might want it to be. And so I'm just like, uh, maybe I'll just watch Netflix. <laughs> and I think that when it comes to sex and pleasure, that there is an assumption that women don't necessarily have to orgasm, that that's not such a big deal because it's so hard. But mm. I think that that's something that needs to change too, because it, it doesn't have to be so hard. and. You know, there's, there are things that couples can do to, to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, I think th that, that belief that women's bodies are inherently very, very complicated is also something that we wanted to challenge because, yes, of course they're complicated. All of our bodies are complicated, but part of the reason why they feel so mystical and so complex is because we haven't taken the time to understand them in the same way that we've tried to understand male bodies. So instead of going in and out, right, the porn thing, in and out, that's how you do sex. No! 
you do a clockwise, counterclockwise twirling pattern. Something like this could blow someone's mind and they wouldn't even consider it because they have no idea what's hiding in their own vulva. You know, I think reaction of men who watch the series, at least the men who got in touch with us, was very positive. There, um, we made an email address that people could respond to us after they watched the video series. And we did get a lot of responses from men who were thankful uh, that this information was out there and sort of gave some experiences. Sometimes they had had their own personal issues and they wanted to share them with us. Or they just, <laughs> we did get a few sex advice. <laughs> We, did we? Oh we got my some gosh, sex yeah, advice yeah, okay. <laughs> from a man in yeah. Australia that was a little inappropriate. But overall, I'd yeah. say that... Well, that he, <laughs> he didn't actually tell us what his thing was. Do you remember? He's the guy who was like, I know, I have the trick. And we were like, someone wrote to us saying, oh, you have problems because you don't understand this one magical trick. And so we did sort of reply and saying, like, what's the magical trick that we need to know? And I don't think he ever got back to us. Yeah, well, it was the innuendo is like, you have to come to Australia and have sex with me, oh, which wasn't great. Oh, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> but overall, I would say that there is a positive, a positive reception that we felt from men as well. Yeah, so we um, we set up an inbox so that people could send us messages. And some of the messages that we received from women were very, very moving. One was um, a young teenage girl who said that she was thinking about labiaplasty surgery because she didn't like how her vulva looked. And after watching the series, understood her body in a new way and felt like it wasn't so abnormal or so disgusting to her. So that was really, really important that she kind of felt differently about her body after watching this. I mean, obviously not all women are getting labiaplasty or creating vaginas from scratch, but still plenty of women aren't comfortable with the way they look. Right, there's still so many women in the dark. I feel like that's why I had to make it. Yeah, because if we don't educate ourselves, then who will? I think the work is political. Um, the work is political in a way because I think part of our message is that you can't be fully in control of your body. You can't advocate for what you need if you don't understand your body. Um, so that's part of the goal of the series, is that women are empowered at the end of watching it.